Okay, in this video we are going to write our first code. Um, I already added a new project called 0104. Um, so if you would like to do that then you can also do that or you can stay in the project that you already have. Anyway, this new project is where we are going to write our code. So we need to make sure then when we start executing our code that it will run the code inside um, this project here. Right now you can see that in scope 011 is actually highlighted or it's it's bold and that means that that's our startup project so when i click start here and the code will run then this project up here in scope 11 is going to execute so we need to make sure that in scope 14 is going to execute instead and we can do that by going to the top here and selecting the drop down menu and selecting 014 and as you can see now, the fourth one here is actually um, bold, and that means that's our startup project. So you could go up here and select it, or you can right-click on something. Let's say we want to make this one our startup. You can right-click and say, set a startup, and then it also changes up here. So it's exactly the same. It doesn't matter which way you use. I usually just select it up here. Okay, let's write our first code. If you take your cursor down here, um, and I just noticed something I don't have line numbers usually when you program it's very nice to have line numbers so that when I point something out then you can say on line something then you can see what line I'm talking about right so let's just add the line numbers just figure I don't have them so if we go to um, tools and options then it should be something called um, text editor let's see there should be something text sampling text editor there and if you select that one and just select general and um, let's say C sharp here and ah, there's something called all languages and then there should be something called line numbers here so set a tick in that so if you go to let's just do it again tools options and then select text editor and select all languages and then make sure line numbers has a tick here and click OK then you'll see now we have some line numbers out here that's that's very nice to have okay so we need to write our first line of code though so the first line we are going to do is to write something in the console and we're just going to write hello world and that's a very very simple task and usually that's the first line of code that everyone writes in, in lots of languages when they learn how to write code so we need to access the console class to access the console right because the console can show us some text and we need to access that class to interact with the console. So if you write console, then you'll see that down here, there's a box that pops up. And this box, box is actually something in Visual Studio called IntelliSense and it will help you write your code. You can see I write, if I write C-O-N, it comes up with some, some suggestions for C-U-N. If I write C-U-N-S, Oh, then you see that okay there's something called console if you notice that console is written with a capital C and I didn't write it with a capital C here but if I have selected console here it's highlighted and I press tab then it selects the right one so now you can see console it's written with a capital C it's very important that you write the letters correctly because if I write console like this then you can see it, it's not gonna recognize console here because it doesn't know that what console so it kept its case sensitive so make sure that every time you write some code you need to use the correct letters not small letters all the way you need to use a capital C here to get the console class as you can see this one is highlighted or is like kind of blue and that's because I wrote it correctly if I do that it doesn't know what it is but if I do this it knows that it's console class so that's very important that you use the IntelliSense whenever you write code. If I would do like this, then it doesn't work. But if I write console and just tap, then you can see that it changes to capital C. So I'm sure I'm using the right class because I'm using the IntelliSense when I'm writing my code. So now we have a handle on the console class because we need to interact with the console. And on the console class, there is some different functionality. For example, writing something to the console. 
So what do we need to do to be able to access that functionality inside the class? Well, to access the functionality inside the class, which this is a static class, but that will make sense later when we look at static, we have to click the dot. This is called a dot operator, and a dot operator basically opens up functionality inside classes and objects. So you can look at the dot operator as a key and the class as a toolbox, right? So we have a toolbox and we, we haven't unlocked it yet. Then we use the dot operator and we unlock it and we are able to access all the functionality inside the console class here. So you're not going to learn everything about all the classes or all the functionality here, but we are going to use the functionality for writing some code. So if you write W, you'll see that it jumps to W, R, I, then you see there's something called console write and something called console dot write line. So right now we're just going to look at the write line and um, we will look at write later. So if you double click or tap, you'll see that it opens up. It adds write line. So write line is a method. As you can see, if I write write uh, like this, you'll see that there's a purple box next to it. When something has a purple box next to it, it's a method, right? And when something is a method, we always need to finish up with open close parentheses. Write line instead. And if I open my parentheses and close it, then you'll see that this is a method or a function and it's executed by adding the parentheses after it. So inside these parentheses, we need to write the code or the text that we want to write in the console. Because if I open this, let's say I write write and open it again, she writes the current line um, terminated to the standard output stream and that's the console. And you can see there are lots of different versions of this. This is very confusing, I know. But basically, we can put whatever we want to write in the console inside these parentheses because this is a method and we open up closed parentheses. So if I write like this, it's going to give me an error. It's going to say that, well, there's a syntax error and the name hello doesn't exist in the current context. So it doesn't know what hello world is. That's because when we need to write text in C-sharp, we need to make it into a string. And that's a data type, and we will also look at that later. But a string is a form of text in coding. So to make this into a string, we simply have to put quotations around it. And you can see that it changed color to, to uh, like reddish brown color. And now it actually knows that this is just some text. It's not some other code I need to access. So now it knows that it's text. So the last thing we need to do, it says here in the error, it expects a semicolon. That's because every time you've written a line of code in C Sharp, you need to tell the compiler that I'm done writing by making a semicolon. And when you've done that, then the line of code is complete. So to sum up, we're using the console class. We are opening the console class with the dot operator. When we have opened the console class, we access the write line function to access some the, the console and write to the console. We open close parentheses because it's a fun, it's a method, and we need to access that method so that we can write something. And every time we have a method in C sharp, we open close parentheses. We tell the method what information it needs, or we give the method some data so that it can write something in the console. And we make sure that that data is a type string, so we put quotations around it and then we close our line of code with semicolon here. If we would like to test our code by running it you'll see that the console will open up and close down immediately. As you can see when I press start it opens and closes. I can barely see that there is something written in the console. So to make sure that we can read it we'll have to pause the code because right now when the code is done executing it will drop out of the main method and just close down the the, the console. So we can use another method here called console dot read line. So console dot read line is basically the opposite of a write line. A write line is something that writes something in the console and a read line is something that reads something from the console. So basically the read line can be used to get user input from the console into your program while write line can take something from the program out in the console and show the user something. 
So right now we're just using read line to wait for a key so that when we press it, it will stop pausing. Um, but when we don't press anything, the code will sit here and wait for the read line to get some input so the console will keep, be kept open. So we will use this for getting user input later, and which is way more useful. But for now, we will just take a look at it so that we can see that it can actually pause our program. So as you can see, when I press start again, the program stays open and the line here is actually just blinking. If I press enter, the console will close down because the read key gets a key in and it's done reading the key and then it drops out of this scope here, the code. So another thing we could do then using read key, you could also delete this and press control and F5 when building. Then the program also stays open, but that has nothing to do with the code you have written. It's just the way that Visual Studio compiles it when you press control F5. So to keep it in debug mode and keep it the way we want it, we'll just do like this for now, right? But you know that you can press control F5 if you want to. You could also make an other console dot write line and say press any key to close the program. And then up here where you hello world is, you can write something else. You can write hello, my name is, and then your name, for example. So now you can see when I play the game or the program, hello, my name is Kenneth, press any key to close the program. Okay, I press a key, I mean enter, and then close it. So any key is not valid, it needs to be enter. Let's do like this. So if we run it again, it should be correct. Hello, my name is Kenneth, press enter to close the program. Okay, and there we go. So now we can write some text in the console and we can wait for input so that we can keep whatever text we've written up in the console. We can keep it there so we can read it. Another thing you might have noticed is the fact that the system namespace up here isn't faded out anymore. And that's because we're using the console class. As you can see, if I would delete this and let it update, then the system will be grayed out. But the second I start to write console, the write line or something, then the system namespace come back because the console class is inside system. So we are using this namespace up here. I'm just going to go back to the original code. So that's why we need the namespaces. If I wouldn't have the system up here, then I can't use the console class because it's not included in this file. So every time we have some functionality that we need, we will need to include the correct namespace so that we can use the functionality in that namespace. And Microsoft have been very nice and created a system namespace that allows us to write something in the console. So that's why we included it. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that InScope Studios is a community founder page, so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.